today my guest is going to take us into the world of afro pop as you can well imagine and guess comes from our artist who goes by the name of Derek Ofe Awoku but in the music industry he is known as Ofe hi how are you I'm um, fine thank you so much. Uh, how's your day be how's your week been uh, my week has been a bit stressful because I'm working on my album okay so, yeah we are the final um, stage so we are working on the mixing and the mastering and there's a lot of like a lot of going stuff around. going on yeah. <laughs> and then of course you have to do all the publicity yeah, and all yeah, yeah, of that. yeah like make sure I get everything on point before we we release it so that's do, like do you have a big team or around um, you or well I, I have I have I have a tight team I won't say it's, it's a big team but like it's, it's it comprises of like friends that I started with uh-huh so we're just a little group of people that are trying to push the agenda yeah, so push yeah. your thing <laughs> forward how would you describe yourself um I will describe myself as um, a curious person mm-hmm. um, I, I like I like to entertain and um, yeah like I'm, I'm basically just curious I always want to know what's new what's 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 around me like yeah, i really want to be abreast with things so. with things what, yeah. what what social things political social, things social political um side to anything like I'm, I'm a scientist i'm a medical yeah. scientist so, so so what's the most amazing <laughs> thing you've discovered out of curiosity <laughs> this week <laughs> Well, I discovered I discovered okay, I read about this um a meteor meteorite that is um in space that has gold on there. Yeah. How, I, uh, how did they find out? Yeah, I don't know. They, they <laughs> <laughs> I think they had pictures from a satellite and I think they they um analyzed it and they say they're saying that there's a material on there that it's it is like gold. gold. So they feel like it's pure gold and that's up there. So they're trying to mine it and it's Elon Musk and it's people that are talking about all these kind of things. So they're trying to mine <laughs> yeah is it, b- but the meteor is it static i think it's not it's not coming at the earth it's not it's, it's not i think it's static. it's yeah. just static yeah. floating around floating around and they're, 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 so, they're, so they're, they're not tired of destroying the earth they want to go and find somewhere <laughs> else to go, to go. <laughs> but there's, there are some people that are worried about it because they feel yeah. it will it it um, destroy the economy of the world basically to which will cause a lot of um it will it will make um it will devalue gold because they're saying the gold that's on it is like i don't know i think they they, they give the 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 I think it's 10 times more than what we have reserved on the earth or something i don't know but i didn't i didn't get that, f- that fact right but yeah. and so they would what they would mine it and then they will bring it here yeah so i think that's that's also one of the reasons why they don't want to mine it now because they feel they bring it who is, who is the day because the day is very interesting the it's not day. us ghana is it yeah it's not us it's not us <laughs> <laughs> it's not us it's not us but i think one of the main people that are championing the whole thing is elon musk so Oh gosh, that man. <laughs> anyway, let's get to what we can do. <laughs> okay, so the first step that, um, you know, we like to find out what the reading habits of our guest oh, okay, is and, okay. and the kind of, what kind of things do you read? Uh, well, I, I, I basically read anything that I get my hands on. But I mean, I, I, I love I love novels. I love, um, I, I also like um, books that are about like the social, um, behavior of like africa and also um, political like anthropological groups. stuff yeah 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 like yeah so so things. who are some of your uh, is there a lot written anthropologically about africa mm. i would i would say not not a lot mm. well um per what i have seen uh, or what i've been exposed to i'm not i'm not sure like yeah there's been a there's, lot there's been a lot what are you reading for actually before you do that name me your three favorite um authors my three favorite authors they have to be african not necessarily because reading is reading and yeah, reading, reading transports you to places so yeah so um i mean most of most of the, the writers i listen to are not <coughs> I, I read sorry are no um very popular but i think i like i like i like some of the books of kwame kuma dr kwame kuma uh, uh, that he's popular 
No, I'm not. I'm saying I'm not, I want now. <laughs> I was saying most, but then I'm come to mention like the popular ones. Yeah. So I'm, I'm Doctor Kwame Puma. Uh-huh. I'm Ata Edu. Oh, of uh, course. And she's also one of my favorites. Sure. And I have this friend of mine who's also a writer, but he has he doesn't have a book out yet, but he's been writing some articles here and there. Mm-hmm, his mm-hmm. name is Vincent Jokoto. Okay. Yeah, I really I really like his writing. His I really style like the kind of things that. Okay. 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 So, what are you reading for us today? Uh, today, I'll, I'll, I'll be reading Amata Edu's um, "No Sweetness" here. Excellent. <laughs> so, um, why this specific book? Well, um, the first time, the first time that I, I think I glanced through the book, I saw it somewhere in my friend's house, and I read it, just a few mm-hmm. um, passages, and I realized I could relate to it. Because growing up, growing up in an African home where my mom was a single parent, mm-hmm. and my dad wasn't around, okay. and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share a dark secret though. So my dad used to um, um, beat my mom before um, I was born. That's that un- unfortunately is too regular. Mm. Too regular men beating women. They, the women that they supposedly meant to love. Yeah, so going growing up in, in and I did I didn't meet him. I didn't meet he was around but um I think they, they divorced before I was even one year old. So But she had the courage to leave, right? Yeah, she had she had I mean she she, she endured it for years. But, but at some point at some point she had to leave. Yeah. At some point she because had there to are leave. too many women who are staying and they're, they're leaving the marriage in a coffin. In a coffin, which is so you have to really applaud the women who yeah. get up and yeah. yeah. So um, that's 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 what happened and me like growing up seeing my mom how strong she is how mm-hmm. how beautiful she is and mm-hmm. go, ha- having to endure that um, I've always had that thing for women like trying to respect women and. Um, I, I, I really hate the act of actually battering a, 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 your wife or something like that. So or, when anybody. I re- <laughs> or, or anybody. Or anybody. Yeah, or anybody. So um, just a few passages from the book, I realized I could relate to it. Yeah, but I've not, I've not really like completed it. I really want to take my time and complete it. it. Since it's, it's Mother's Day tomorrow, Yes. Um, I just felt I should just read some um, <laughs> passage from the um, just so people would know how how strong our mothers are. What anyways. what are you doing with your mother tomorrow? What are you doing for her? What are your plans? <laughs> well, I'll, I I may send her a flower. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um, yeah, flowers, and then I'll sing for her. She's not in the country. She's okay. in the United States. So okay. I'll, I'll, so I'll what you you have what is like a Zoom thing <laughs> going yeah, on, and you yeah, sing yeah, for and I'll her. Yeah, sing for her, and I'll, we'll just we'll just talk and just plan. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> and brilliant, reassure brilliant. her that everything will be fine. Fine, yeah. Because obviously with this COVID and, yes. you know, the difficulty of people being able to move around. Yeah. Okay, fire away. Let's hear. <laughs> no sweetness here. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's good. It's on, it's, uh, it's on your phone, yeah? Yeah. Charlie, your team member is fast, eh? <laughs> 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 so what do you, you want me to read like a, a, um, a, a, a quote right a passage from yeah you? just read a little something from <laughs> from it it could be you know half a page or a page oh, okay, but sure. you know that yeah okay she used to look at their serious faces and laugh silently to herself they meant what they were saying the only thing was that loving them all as sister lover and mother she also knew them. She knew them as intimately as the hems of her dresses. That it w- that it was so much easier for them to talk about the beauty of being oneself, not to struggle to look like white girls, not straightening one's hair, mm. and above all, not to wear the wig. The wig, ah, the wig. They say. <laughs> It is made of artificial fiber. Others swear that if it if it is not gypsy gypsy hair, gypsy hair, mm-hmm. then it is Chinese. Extremists 
uh, sure they are made from the hairs of dead white folk. This one gave her nightmares, for she had read somewhere a long time ago about Germans making lamp shades out of Jewish people's skin. Mm -hmm. And she would shiver for all the world to see. At other times, when her world was sweet, like when she and Fifi were together, the pictures that came into her, into her mind, were not so terrible. She would just think of words of crazy high life songs and laugh. Mm -hmm. The one about the people at home scrum scrambling to pay exorbitant prices for second hand clothes from America. And then, as a student of economics, she would also try to remember some other truths she knew about Africa. Yeah. But then one of my favorite um, quotes from the, from the book mm -hmm. is actually this one. Well, so there's Kujufi, um, who is a character in the, in the book. Yeah, and he, he, had, he had a wife, um, his first wife, and, and then a son. But then he married two extra wives, and he liked um, the two, the, the last two, more than the first one. Wife. Yeah. So Kojofi is a selfish and bullying man, whom no decent woman ought to have married. So he was, he was a very um, handsome man, handsome young man. But a braggart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, he got on marvelously with his two other wives, but they were three of a feather. Mm-hmm. So basically, like yeah, that's like the quote from the book. That's that particular side of 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 the book is like one of the places that I really highlighted. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> is Amata Edu is an amazing writer. Yeah, she is. She really is. Is an incredible. But I think also when you were talking, as you were reading, and I I kept on thinking. The book, it, it's so timely. The whole thing of the, the wigs and the mm -hmm. whatnot and the it's bleaching and the... Seriously, it's just... I, I, I see she, she, had, she had, like, she had traveled through time. And I, I don't know, I, like, right now reading it again is actually making me understand that these are actually issues that are still, like, these are issues you are still do, dealing with in Africa here. Mm. In, uh, even let's come home, Ghana. So yeah, I mean it's, it's 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 it's. But to play devil's advocate, eh? I mean, even when you take the thing of, um, <coughs> like a lot of people who see something like skin bleaching as a sign of low self-esteem, mm -hmm. and that they're trying to be white. But the thing is, as black people, our color range goes from very light mm -hmm. to very to dark. Very dark, yeah. So. For instance, somebody like me, I'm dark. Mm -hmm. Now, if one day I decided to bleach myself and then I wanted my skin tone to be maybe like somebody whose skin tone is maybe two shades lighter than me, mm -hmm. I just want to be a lighter black. It's not that I want to be white. White. <laughs> do, do you understand? Yeah. And so that thing where... Um, the, I, I think it's an it's, it's an interesting conversation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very it's, it's very it's a very interesting conversation. But uh, I think um, some of these people too that that bleach their skin mm. um, actually have have a model of the white man or the white woman in their minds. In their minds. Yeah. Um, either they want to be have and not fast. that and not that they want to look maybe have the skin tone of the um, Ethiopians or something. Hmm. Some some of them go on and on and on and on till like the 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 they are start very, looking like yeah, Lil Kim very <laughs> yeah <laughs> they start looking like Lil Kim basically so till they are very white I understand I understand where you're coming from because some white people also tan yes yeah so they can look a bit like brownish but I think it's it's all about <laughs> you social. <laughs> Social, social pressures yeah, yeah, yeah it's just yeah, social yeah. pressures basically because i read an article in the guardian where um like for instance big stars like the beyonce's and the rihanna's and that when they go on big 
uh, magazine covers like Vogue and stuff, mm -hmm. they always lighten their skin. Wow. And I mean, these people are these people's skin from when you first they first hit the scene till now has already lightened. Yeah. And yes, yet, when they yes, put them yes, on covers, because it. the people who are in charge are white people, mm -hmm. and they think that white people prefer black people, black who, people are who are closer to, to the, their yeah. skin tone. I don't. I don't know why our skin tone makes them feel threatened. I don't. I don't know why. Well, obviously, it's a very powerful thing, and <laughs> and, and and the the sad part is, we seem to be the people who are least aware of its power. Mm -hmm because we keep on wanting to change Seriously. it, so that's it. Seriously. So when we were talking about, um, you know, you being a scientist, yeah. and I asked you if you did it for your mother or for your yourself, uh -huh. what, what kind of science? Um, medical laboratory science. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what does that lead to? What kind of careers does that lead to? Okay, so it, it basically you become a biomedical scientist or medical laboratory scientist. So it's it, it has the field of microbiology and the molecular biology. We have um, 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 hematology, all these ones. Like so hematology is to do with blood, blood right? Yeah, so it's, it's basically uh, we, 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 we investigate your bodily fluids and mm -hmm. other tissues of your body to... Um, find out what is exactly wrong with you let me just say it in the long um, the layman um terms. so so when you go to the, the doctors the doctors and then they, they refer you to a lab test yes when you go to the laboratory they it's take either, yeah, blood swabs whatever swabs so even with the corona mm -hmm. the swabs that we take from the um, throat to go perform PCR on is the uh, medical laboratory scientist that do okay and do you practice that. yeah I used to practice I practiced for three years after school but then um, I I give I give it a pause last year because I wanted to concentrate on music for on a while music. Yeah. okay but I have I have a foundation called the offer foundation yes the offer foundation yeah, so we go around to um, orphanages to um, actually more like get medical records of most of the kids over there oh, for the for okay. the caretakers so um i, I realize most people go there to donate food and clothes which is very good but um the, i i the just health thought, side yeah the is health very side is very too. yeah so we went we um, last two years we went to um save them young an orphanage and um, mm, i read the piece about it and yeah. watched some videos online yeah, and we gave out some drugs and then we checked them for their blood groups um sickle cell statuses and all of that so okay. they can at least have that record down down so if maybe because, is, because obviously a lot of the kids come there without any, without any yeah, they don't medical have knowledge no record at, at all. all some of them don't even know their names some of them don't have names not to talk of blood type <laughs> yeah so i just took it upon myself to uh, my team yeah yeah i have a team of medical um people medical experts as well doctors nurses that also move with me around with you to okay these yearly stuff so. oh, okay so it's like every year yeah you every year but this this particular year i want to do more than one mm -hmm. yeah i want to i want to do more because last year we didn't have any obviously so because of our yeah. friend la corona yeah, so this year we're hoping to have more okay so you're a scientist on one side why music and when did music start for you when did you <laughs> Okay, so um, funny story. When I was when I was very little, I don't know how old I was about by that time, but I, my mom would always go to. We were living at Tema, but then my mom would come to our cry and come for like family gatherings, mm -hmm. and then she'd come back and and like giving us stories. Hey, this cousin of yours was dancing, and everybody was looking and cheering on. And I used to be a very quiet um, child. But I always knew that I could do better than my than my cousin that she was always talking about. I knew I. Could. Are you an only child? Or no, you have siblings? I have, I have a sister, a big sister. Okay. Yeah, so we were just two. Uh -huh. But my mom was very protective of us because she she was scared of a few other. I think she had her own reasons. So there were a lot of family gatherings that we weren't going to. So she would go and then come back and tell Bring us. Bring you oh, the stories, yeah. the filler. <laughs> yeah, so I knew I could I could do more than this cousin of mine. Even though you hadn't seen what she was doing. Yeah, <laughs> so when, when, when my, mom, my mom left um, to the U.S. when I was 10, and when she left, I had to go stay with my grandma at um, Dan Suman. So when it was, she was the she was the life of the party. Like my grandma is like the life. I won't say she was. She is still the life For of the, the party. party. So every time she has parties and all of that, and 
I think my on my tenth birthday, that was I, I moved to her place in that month. In that month, so on my tenth birthday, she planned something very big. Nice. And at that time too, we were neighbors to Terrible Chaka, so that guy like, I could I watch him rehearse and all of that. Okay. So I had I had picked certain things from him the way he was he he's been rehearsing and dancing and all. So on my birthday. They said the birthday boy should come and dance and take the dance floor. And I requested for a terrible chaka song. And I started singing and dancing like him and all. And everybody was was so amazed. like oh. Including your cousin. Yeah, Gary could do this. <laughs> My cousin had to step back like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't. So from there, I was I was being called to come perform at uh, birthday parties for oh, like nice. my peers, basically. Oh, wow. So around like 10 years, 9 years, I'll be called to go perform. And then they, I realized, yo, I, I really like the attention that I brought and I really liked how I made people feel. Mm-hmm. So as little as 10 years old, I knew I wanted to perform. I didn't know how to start. I didn't know which one to. So when I got to JHS, I start, I joined a, a street dance group. But then you were getting encouragement from your family, right? Yeah, no, I, I was getting encouragement for just my grandma. Okay. Yeah, yeah. every other person thought, oh, it will fade, it's a face, it will this go. Is, okay. Yeah, but I didn't know how serious I was with it. So performing around, um, like in the street dance group called For Bent, we were performing around the coastal areas of Accra. And then I got to SHS, that's t- my secondary school. So when I got there around 2008, that was when Kasahari was very, very, very big. Mm-hmm. And Sakwa mm-hmm. was all over the place. So everybody in Tema at that point, or Tema at that point, wanted to be a rapper. Yes. And I was like, hey, I can do this too, because I, I, I could memorize all the Sakwa lyrics. So and do them as fast as him. Yeah, I used to, I used to like really do it as fast as him. So there was this guy. Um, the, they, they put up a battle between me and this guy called Abbasaraptic. Mm-hmm. And he was, at that time, living in Sarkodia's neighborhood, Comte 9, but I was from Dansuma. So he knew more songs than I did. So we had the battle, and obviously he, bat- he murdered me in the battle. Mm-hmm. So a friend of mine called Rash Kelly told me, ah, but you, you did, like, you, you, you can rap Sarkodia's lyrics. Why wouldn't you write your own? Because if you could memorize How old it, were you by this time? Oh, I think I was around... 16. Okay. Yeah. So when he said that, I was like, yo, I could, I could actually do that. So I, I started scribbling a few things down, few rhymes here and there, here and then. It caught fire. So people actually liked what I was doing. Mm-hmm. But people used to tell me anytime I'm going to bath, like I sing, or like when I wake up in the morning, I sing. And they, they, they like the voice they're hearing. But I thought singing was for girls. I didn't want to, I only wanted to be hardcore and rap. Like, mm. I didn't want to, I they didn't want any, like anything to do with singing. So it was after high hey, school. Hey, so the Michael Jacksons and <laughs> co, you thought they yeah. were girls, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were all girly, like. Mm. So after high school, um, I, I, I went through a very difficult breakup. Like, yeah, and I don't know, as, as, as later as I was, I felt it very deep because I felt betrayed, I felt I wasn't loved, and I just, I just wanted to This was your story. first love, right? Yeah, yeah not, oh. not my first love. Oh. Okay, okay, I'll say technically my first love, but I've, I'd been in several relationships. But this but was, was the just, one that you really felt that was... the one that I really was... felt like, yeah, I could build my future with. And then she just gave up on me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there I, I was, I was in my room. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was just, yeah, I was in my room crying. And then I took the guitar. I had learned how to play the guitar because of her. And I wanted to write a song with that guitar, like perform it to her on her birthday. But then but I took the guitar and the same. She and, dumped you before that. <laughs> Before that, oh, before I could even do that, and I, I, I wanted to be a, it to be a surprise. I didn't even tell her about any of those. So after after the breakup, um, I think a month into it, I took the guitar one night, and I started writing a song. And I wanted to rap actually, but it was just singing that was coming to me. So I wrote the song, let it go. And then after writing that song, I went to the studio, Ground Up Studios, to mm-hmm. go record it. But they they put a camera on me when I was recording it. So it was like more like a live session. Okay. And they posted it. I didn't know they had posted it. They posted it, I think, two weeks after. And all of a friend of mine called me one morning and he was like, oh, what what have you done on Twitter? You're trending. I was like, Really? I didn't have bundles, so I had to ask my roommate for <laughs> some two CDs to go buy bundle. So I had to buy it and then I checked and 
my, my mentions were just blowing up. Blow up I yeah, had colleagues up. like Kibi and all these other people like mentioning my name on Twitter. I was like, hey, people actually really like what I'm doing. So let me follow through with it. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's what brought me here. And that's that's, that's, a, that's a very interesting journey. I hope you're giving credit to your ex. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I, once in a while, I thank her, like, oh, thank you so much for mm -hmm. this. And is, uh, is she also regretting? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now that you, you're, you're ascending. Yeah, I don't know, but I hope, I hope she won't, because it actually helped me, so. Yeah, but I think, I think it's nice that... <clears throat> You looked, you looked for the positive of it, cause somebody else would just be yeah, like, yeah, 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 that will burn. It was, it was very hard. It was very hard. I could literally like sleep, wake up, and I'm already tearing up. I don't know why, but it's, it's one of those feelings. I felt I needed to, I needed energy. I needed that energy to actually be bold to enter into the music because I knew I wanted to do it, but a lot of, um, a lot of, um, let me say, a lot of factors were at play here. My mom, my family. What would they say about it? Like, my mom is a very staunch Christian. Like, mm -hmm. she, she she wouldn't condone any secular thing in the house. But I was like, okay, but this is how I feel. Like, this is what I want to sing about. Can I sing about it? It's not it's not necessarily about God, but can I sing about it? And I did, and it worked. So from there, I had the courage to write more and more and more about things happening. And now she's me. accepting of it. Yeah, she is. She is, but she's still she's still bent on me doing gospel. But right now, she has toned down a bit on the whole thing because Maybe she's she seen her <laughs> she, She's talked to her. She's yeah, like... she's tired. She's tired. So yeah, I mean, that was. I I think I needed that push mm -hmm. because a lot of people were telling me, "You're yeah, yeah, good. Try. Go enter the studio. Record." I, I, there was this time I was in the studio for close to three years. I never recorded. I would always go there, sweep. They would send me up and down. When it's time, when it's like the time, the studio is free. Oh, like off air, enter the booth and do something. No, I'm waiting. I have to be perfect. Like I always had that kind of mindset. But then when the whole heartbreak thing happened. Then you just, just, you just had to do I, it. I just went and uh, yeah, I went to the floor and I'm here today. So. You <laughs> spent three years in the studio. You didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did it. I did it record. The, it's, it's, it's interesting how, um, how like the journeys that yeah. people have to and 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 the fact that everybody's journey is different it's different, so different um but that's that's amazing tell me you're an afro pop yeah <clears throat> what's the difference between afro pop and afro beats so um afro afro beats afro beats is more like i believe afro beats is more like what the ebo taylors and uh fella Kutis we're doing back in the day mm -hmm. right now there's afro beats uh -huh. there's afro beats which yeah. is what like most africans are doing now or most west africans are doing the nigerians and then Ghanaians and but afro pop because initially initially i used to say afro fusion because it's just a base of like african elements mm -hmm. like that those are the main elements but then um it's you can you can either mix it with a little r b soul or um, pop So music the Afro or, is the bass is the and then bass, you build on the top of it. and you build on top of it. So basically it's Afro fusion, Afro pop. It's Afro pop, like popular music, contemporary music for the youth, for the urban people, basically. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the process <coughs> mm -hmm. of creating music. Mm -hmm. How do you generate ideas? What influences you? How do you go about? Because you're a songwriter, yeah. right? Yeah. How do you go about? Do you, you know, and, and how does your guitar play into <laughs> all of that? Okay. So um, at times, the, at times when I'm just alone and I take the guitar, I'll be playing. I'll, I'll be playing a few notes here and there. And then I just I just remember something that maybe an information I picked up from somewhere or I watched uh, the news or I read something and from there I can get like a word and that word would just become something bigger I mean uh, like a song so I have a, an example example yeah an example is my song called Santorini yes so we when played I that earlier. yeah when I when I when I walked into the studio okay so was the one who produced it he told me, oh, it's been a while since you recorded here. So let me play you a beat. So from there, we wanted to have that whole um, Askamaya kind of beat, like the Nigerian um, 
kind of beat, yeah, vibe. So we started playing Tini's songs, mm -hmm. started playing some other other songs, and I think he got inspiration from there to start playing the beat. But then I also needed inspiration to write to the beat, but I didn't have any inspiration. So I was just on my phone, and then I saw um, a picture of a guy at Santorini. First, I didn't know the name of the place. So when I saw when I saw so what picture, is Santorini for our listeners and those okay, of us who it's, don't it's, know? It's a place in Greece. It's okay. actually, I think, it's an island or so. In is Greece. it one of the places where refugees are going to, or is it like a holiday? No, it's a holiday place. place. It's okay. a very nice place. They have white <coughs> buildings that are overlapping. It's a very nice landscape, like mm -hmm. very very nice. So I saw the guy was wearing white, and the way the, the the blocks and everything was white, and the sea you could see the sea like it was high, so you could see the sea. Blue and sea. Yeah, blue sea. I was like, well, I'd like to take someone special here one day. So there, the name Santorini came. And then, I mean, I would like to take someone there, so let's go. Then I just put it together. Let's go, Santorini. From there, we go to Fiji. So I just, I just started. <laughs> the idea just came. Okay, fine. If you want to take someone special to this place, then why don't you take the person to other places too as well and just create memories around the world? Yeah, so take you around the world, my baby girl. You know, but I, yeah. So that's where I just got all those ideas from. At times, I don't know how they come, but they just they just come. They so just at times, the beats would inspire you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, too, some things you just pick up from places. Maybe you just saw something, you heard something, you heard a sound. It just helps. And then sometimes, too, you can write the lyrics and then they can, they can put, play, a beat. put a beat on there. Yeah. Okay, you've collaborated with some... Yeah. Plenty, plenty people. <laughs> who was your favorite to? Um, my work favorite. With? And my who favorite. was your least favorite? I know you're not. <laughs> you're not even gonna tell me that, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. But who was your favorite, and why? What is it that they brought to the table that you felt was like important? Well, I would, I would say, I would say. Okay, my favorites. My favorites are two, actually. Mm -hmm. Can I say? Can of I? course, okay, of course. So Pick them the up. First, yeah, so <laughs> the first one was Kwesiata. Um, Kwesiata because at that, at that time we were writing the song, the human being song. He came into the studio. All, uh, first of all, he came all the way from Tema to Latebi Okoshi just to record a song for me, free of charge. So when he came and he, he heard what I, had, I was putting down, I was trying to put down, he just walked into the booth and he gave he, he was just spot on with the delivery like he gave exactly what i had in mind for a feature everything blessed every day sunny man still stressed but me name god got me like he he really related to the whole thing and at that point i had not even laid the hook but he just heard a few things i was just scribbling down mm -hmm. and he just connected and he just gave that fire so I think he made it very easy for me to continue the song. Okay. Because he had now so given me a direction. So you inspired him, then he inspired yeah, you. Yeah. So he had already he had now created a direction for me mm -hmm. to follow, and it was like, yo, this is what exactly you want to talk about. So talk about it. Just left, and I really loved. I really, I really liked that thing because he really made it very easy for me. Mm -hmm. Another person is also Pataranki. Pataranki because <laughs> he surprised me. It was a surprise from nowhere. Like, I, I didn't expect it. I never expected to have a song with Patronke. At that point in my career, a friend of mine who is CT, the producer who played the beat, mistakenly played the song. He was supposed to play another beat for Patronke, but he mistakenly opened a project. Oh, Patronke was in Ghana? No, he was in South Africa. So ah. I went to South Africa to go record those songs and I came back. Okay. And when I came, I think two months after, CT also um, like produces for Pato Ranking. So normally when Pato goes to South Africa, CT goes to the hotel and then he'll play him like a few beats for him to just select. select. So while I was playing the beats, I think CT mistakenly played the song, a song I had recorded already in the studio. That was Firmano. And even how he even recorded Firmano was, was, was funny. Like we, we were just, we were just reminiscing when we were kids. The kind of songs we used to listen to, the kind of songs we used to love, and then the Femanu song came. So that's also another story that I'll tell. But then Pato, because Pato surprised me, mm -hmm. and Pato made everything so easy. When he heard the song, he just recorded it before me even knowing. So I didn't even have a hint, like I didn't even know anything. He recorded, and then they called me on video call, and he told me, yo, I have a surprise for you. He, he hit the play button, and... The song was playing and all I could hear was his voice followed after my, my first chorus. I was like, God, this 
this is this is something else. Like major blessing. Yeah. So from there, he he just came down to Ghana, shot the video, made sure that with promotions he helped out and everything. He made everything so easy. But you know, I mean, obviously, you know his backstory. So um, I've worked with him once. Wow. <clears throat> I was, um, there's a, a, an MTV series called Sugar. Oh, okay. So I've worked on um, oh. those. Wow. And um, of course, you know, MTV has all these stars. Yeah. And so they always try and get them into, into the to Sugar. Yeah. And, um, and I remember we were at a club <laughs> for the scene and Paturankin was supposed to be performed. And the owner of the club's wife's kid, mm -hmm. little like five or six year old, what like really liked um, oh, Pato oh, Rankin. Yeah. So when he came, and the the mother said, "Look, there's Pato Rankin," and he started acting all <laughs> shy and everything. <laughs> then, um, you know, the mother went to 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 him. And he, he told her, oh, tell your son that I would like to see him if he will allow me to come and see <laughs> him, you know. Like so he turned the thing around yeah, and yeah, yeah. before you know it, the kid was on his lap uh -huh. and he was he talked to everybody. He was Seriously. really cool, down to earth. He did his performance, so he chilled with earth. us a bit and then, you know, off he went. So down to earth. Like, it's, at times it amazes me because someone, someone that's at the point where he is right now and he's still so connected to the people around like when he walks into a room he wants to feed on everyone's energy he wants to also give you that give kind of you. energy and I've, i'm learning a lot from him i'm really really learning a lot from him that's what i'm saying that he's one of my favorites because he didn't just leave it there at a, at a feature he, he he went on to mentor and he's still mentoring and he's still advising and he's still like in, in involved in everything that I'm doing. So. Excellent. Okay, your least favorite, you don't need to tell us their name, but you can at least tell us what it was about them that didn't sit too well with you. And then everybody can play the guessing game. Who's he talking about? Is he talking about? Is he talking about? Well, first off, I would, I would say it's just, it's just um, the they, they, they were not of, uh, they were not professional. They were so unprofessional about the whole thing. And they made it look like um, they were doing you a favor. They were doing me a favor. Yeah, it's business. Mm -hmm. So if 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 you you don't want to do business, just say it, and then we just move on to the next one. But if you try and like be tossing and all of that, it doesn't make sense. So for me, I feel it's just the whole unprofessionalism of the whole thing. Like, yeah, yeah. you just have to be straight. Oh, I can't do this, or I don't want to. I don't. I don't like the beat, or I don't like this, or I don't want to do. But something. you know, some people like to feel good that they're being chased by yeah. people left, right, and center, <laughs> and you yeah, know. Wow. <laughs> but you know that that is um, that's uh, that's a, a trait that you come across quite a lot. Quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm training my mind to actually just get used so to. So once yeah. you come across them, you just yeah, sideline, just, just yeah. move on to who's ready to do yep, business. Yep, yep. Okay, let's talk about guitar because. A lot of mm. musicians in mm. our system are not musician musicians. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can go in the studio, somebody gives them a beat, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. But you actually play. <laughs> how does how has being able to play a musical instrument facilitated your your work as a musician? Mm, yeah. So first of all, I could actually play a show. Mm -hmm without having like any electronic car gadgets connected mm -hmm. because I just take my acoustic, acoustic guitar and I can sit in the room with people. How did you learn? Did you have a teacher? Did you do YouTube lessons? Did you, how did you, after your heart was broken? <laughs> your so before the heart was broken, I think I was my final year in high school mm -hmm. and I had these friends. I was fortunate enough to have friends that were in the school band and these guys are very amazing people mm -hmm. so the school band like my batch at that point we had Enokud, we have leo latte we have all these guys so when i told them i wanted to learn how to play an instrument they told me oh they feel with what i do the guitar will be better so then they gave me a guitar and then they they, they they allowed me to like rehearse with it so they taught me a few um chords, chords on there and I started like la fa do so like that, mm -hmm, uh, and mm -hmm. then I picked it. So when I picked it now, so my you're dexterity, yeah. So my dexterity. I mean, they taught me first. Mm -hmm. They they show me 
how to do it. But then they were also we were all busy, we were all learning. Yeah. So for the final exam. So I was I was just doing it maybe in my free time after learning. I'll just grab something to eat and I just take the guitar and then I'll so I've I worked on my the, my the, the, the thing is when you fall in love with an instrument, it's yeah, like if you're not like careful you can spend the whole seriously, day. Seriously, seriously. So I was just I was just playing around with it and then um gradually I started like picking up other chords. Uh -huh. And then I started watching YouTube videos and learning other chords. So from there, um, I think yeah, it's just been uphill. But um, the instrument has also helped me with my voice mm -hmm. because now I can sit down and have my own vocal like training. And I just take the guitar and I just run through the skills and I just sing. And it has helped. It has helped. La 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 la. <laughs> Yeah, it's just helped me with that my, one where you go a yeah, scale and you go yeah, a scale and then you come yeah, on. The, yeah. yeah, so it has really, really helped me with my vo my vocals. So mm -hmm. um, what <coughs> other artistic skills do you have and how do, do they influence you? Uh, obviously, you dance. Mm, yeah, so I used to really, really draw, mm -hmm. like draw well. When I, was in, when I was in school, normally when we have our days, they'll call you to come draw on the blackboards of other classes and all of that. So that's one thing I still have in me. It even helped me with my biological like drawings when I, when I was in high school. Okay. Yeah, so I used to even do some of those drawings for my friends and all. Yeah, so I still have it. I think I, w I want to pick it back up because yeah. I never learned how to paint. But mm -hmm. I want to read. But it's like pencil them. drawings yeah, that you pencil do. Pencil drawings that I do. But you see, we have some really amazing pencil artists where it just looks so, so life like, like, like it's like incredible. Like you can have a sweat and you feel like it's actual sweat. Mm. It's amazing. Okay, so that was Fe Manu yep. by Ofe and Pato Rankin and Blackstone. Yeah. And that song of theirs came out a long, a long while time, back. I think 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Um, I read that you have um, a label management deal with a U.S. based company. Yeah, so that was that was initially. Mm -hmm. Right now, right now, um, I think my my deal with them is, has ended. Okay. Yeah. So how, but but when you, how did you get the deal? How did it go? How did it come about? Um, and so, how did it end? Okay, so the the boss of that label was actually a fan of mine, or he's still a fan of mine. But at that, at that time, he was a very strong fan of mine. So he, he reached out to me because it got to a point where I wasn't releasing music mm -hmm. anymore. A whole year I hadn't released music. So he reached out and was like, oh, you've not released any more songs. Like, why? Why? What's the problem? So then I told him, oh, I had this issue, like money, financial issues. So I couldn't really fund some of the projects. And uh, there were a lot of songs that I needed to shoot videos for. And all. I was like, okay, fine. Then why won't we step in? Because he has um, a company in the U.S. that does like, shows so mm -hmm. he's a promoter then mm -hmm. i was like oh why won't he why wouldn't they step in so like they can have like a, a a label branch of that company so they can help with my music and just get the songs out there so like yeah so we came together and then i signed to them and then we started working on so we worked on the song santorini and then we worked on Fimano. Mm -hmm. that was just for two years so just this february it ended. Okay. So, yeah. And you were not interested in renewing? Yeah, I wasn't interested in renewing because um I I, I felt I felt at that at that stage in my life I, I, I could now like take care of um the, the decision making and also getting the songs out there and then they also felt like yeah right now they've helped me to a point where they feel like I can really move the, on. You and, can move Yeah, because on. initially they just wanted to come in to just help like that's very Push very good yeah because i mean but as a a musician or as an artist mm -hmm. isn't it ultimately wouldn't you want um an a, a side of it that took care of the business side so that you could focus purely on the artistry yeah so right now right now with the kind of team that i've built Mm -hmm. And the way the world is going now, like a lot of things have to do with the streaming and all of that. Yeah. And we have third parties that take care of that, the digital kids and all. Okay. But there are also ways where labels can come in. So big labels like Universal, um, Sony, Sony, all these cool. people are giving distribution deals to artists that they feel like are worth getting that kind of deal. So that's like a kind of deal that I've worked 
for my mm -hmm. EP right now. Okay. And I have a team that's taking care of the whole business aspect. Of I have sorting like, that yeah, out. I have the manager, I have my business manager, my lawyers, everything. They are there. They are there also to work like the business side of the whole thing. And then I'm just doing the creative side. So okay. that's just what I've placed right now in my life. Okay. So if um, a, a company, um, somebody has done their music and a company reaches out to them, mm -hmm. what are, in your case, it was somebody who was a huge fan, mm -hmm. whatever, and and they also wanted to help. Mm -hmm. And Push. you you got your, they pushed and it got mm -hmm. to a point where you both felt that yeah, it's okay, you, know, you yeah. don't need. Um, what about if somebody, um, like the typical way, an artist is there, um, a label has decided that, mm -hmm. because obviously it's also a money-making yeah, thing. A money -making what thing. kind of things should the um, artist, you know, you've got a young artist coming up mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there's this label mm -hmm. that's interested in you. What are the things that an artist should look out for to make sure that they get the best deal? Okay, so first of all, you should you should actually know the plan, at least two year, three year plan mm -hmm. that the label has for you. Because in as much as you're signing to them and they're going to invest in you, they need to add value to you. They need to add value so you have to know the two year three year clear cut plan because most labels here in ghana especially they don't really know what you're doing in terms of yeah they don't really really know what you're doing right now even the big labels like universal and all are not even doing artist development that much anymore uh -huh. and you as an artist you need to develop because you, it's the value that you add to yourself that's what makes gives you like a bargaining something a bargaining chip actually mm -hmm. to get deals and all these things so mm -hmm. i feel they, 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 they should really focus on what kind of plan the label has for them other than just the money they're going to give to you because, because you have to recoup it because you you also yes they have to recoup yeah. it and then you hear all these stories of where artists actually lose their backlog yeah, of and, and yeah, they're and no longer to, owners yeah, of yeah and you need to hey that's one thing that's one serious thing too you need to own your masters you need to also you need to have leverage you need to know how you're going to bargain for all these things you mm. shouldn't focus too much on the upfront money they're going to give us i want plenty i want this i want that no because at the end ultimately of the day, it's going to come out of your money yeah. when they're shooting those big videos yeah. for you, you are paying you're for paying it, for it. <laughs> yeah. you're paying for it so i think that's the m most important thing and artists shouldn't sit down and be like okay now i'm signed to a label so they should do all the work because because they can also drop you. Yeah, they if can you, drop you, you and go for the next hot thing. So yeah. you need to be hot. You need to make sure you're always on point. You're always trying your best to um, be better than you were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all, all comes into the value they're adding in the artist development stage phase of whatever you do. Wow, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I really, really <laughs> enjoyed this conversation. Um, you, you come across like you really know exactly what you're doing you know exactly where you're going <laughs> and heavy. and no because sometimes you meet you know everybody wants to be a musician yeah. and you know when you talk to them you wonder you too where did you pass <laughs> what you know you ask some questions and the answers you get you wonder if you this wonder. person even knows the industry that they're in so it's been it's been a huge pleasure you know talking you, with you, you so and fun. and the fact that you know and all those nice cute anecdotes <laughs> and <laughs> everything your you so your much. heartbreak that led uh -huh. to guitar playing <laughs> and i think that is fantastic so thank you so much for thank taking so the time to come so and much. and join us today in the studio yeah. okay so that was okay <laughs> and um we have hit the end of the show wow. so um People out there, if you think you are not worthy, try sleeping with a mosquito. Um, this proverb is true and is attributed to many African countries. Even the Dalai Lama is often associated with this quote. So never think that you're too low. Never think that you are not of value. We've all gone through a phase where we've questioned our worth. I know I've been through it on several occasions. And it's easy to tell somebody to not think about it or you know not have low self-esteem but it is it is an issue but as the mosquito that small small thing that would disturb you at night 
and take away your peace of mind. Um, have that mindset, have that mindset that you are worthy, you can, you can, you can, uh, I, I think it's not right to tell anybody you can do whatever you want, you can achieve everything you want in, the, in the, because not everybody can be the president of Ghana, there's only one person every four years. And so that's a bit crazy, but I think that you can, you can achieve the things that you want. And even talking to a fair just now, somebody could have had a heartbreak and then they, they could have sank somewhere. But he used it and, you know, he moved on. And, you know, even now he's, thank he's still thanking the lady <laughs> for putting him on the, yeah, <laughs> the journey. Yeah. So always remember your worth. Always remember your self-esteem. And don't let other people make you feel as if you are less. At Fab Teen, which is on this afternoon... That's my TV show for teenage girls. It's on GH1 at 2.30 this afternoon. Our motto is never forget your worth. You are enough.